In previous videos I've talked about straddle marking and how black bears use this to uh, leave scent on things. And in this case, here is a, uh, I call it Scotch broom, but I think it's actually French broom or Spanish broom. Anyway, it's a non-native plant, invasive, that uh, grows very well around here. But anyway, looking at it from the side, you can see that it's knocked over. Normally they grow upright like the one in the background there, but this one clearly is knocked over, and this one here also shows some sign of being knocked over. So, come over here and look at the base. So see right here, the area of disturbance and flattening, the grass has been mashed down. The same thing underneath here, in between the two of them, look how that grass has been mashed down in that direction, which is the general direction that both of these bushes are leaning, this one and this one. So, the bear came up here, straddled this, and walked over it, basically. You can see the, uh, that was me, but right here, this is sign of the bear, and up there, so the bear came up here, straddled this, walked over it, left scent on it, and uh, basically knocked it over. Some of this stuff is loose, but it's all interlaced in this direction, as well as this one here, and even a little bit of this. So this got scent marked by a black bear. Pretty cool, huh? That's, uh, we call it straddle marking, because the bear straddles it and uh, marks as he goes. Sometimes they will use urine, and other times they'll just uh, rely on scent being deposited from their fur and glands on their uh, on their skin. There's another black bear sign for you. Another nice bear trail here. Very short strides, wide straddle. See the uh, worn places everywhere my feet go. It's pretty obvious right here by the log. And this is near a spring. So bear comes up here. The trail heads on and you can see it up there pretty obvious, but also here, very worn, and a lot of damage to the vegetation here, because the bears possibly come in here to wallow. Um, I know they've used it in the past as a wallow. Might also be a drinking water source. It's just a little spring, and eventually it's going to dry up, but it'll take probably a couple of months at least before this dries up. And meanwhile, pretty good water source. So this could either be drinking water or a, or a wallow, but you notice all the damage to the vegetation because the bear has been using this. And then, down here, the trail continues. See how obvious this is? This is redwood duff, and you need to make repeated trips through this stuff because if you just step on it, nothing's going to happen. But you need to make repeated trips back and forth over this stuff, stomping your feet in order to create well-worn circles like this. And that's what a bear has done here. So this is the uh, short stride, wide straddle, and very deep marks. Um, because as the bear walks, its hind feet or its hind legs are stiff-legged. So what that does is it helps to drive the, um, the scent glands that are on the bottom of the feet into the soil a little bit. As the bear hits the ground with each footstep, the scent glands leave scent. So this trail is a part of a marking ritual. And now here it gets a little bit less visible. It's still here, but not quite as easy to see. Here's a, here's a little disturbance right there with some flattening. Um, so this part, possibly, the bear is not stomping when he does this. Still coming through here because there's still places like here where you can see the, the worn areas. But also the soil is a little harder, so the marks may not show up. And then from here it goes on down the dirt road. So here's a nice front foot of the bear. Right here is the carpal pad, and here is the the uh, metacarpal pad, toes would be up here. This is the right front track, and there was impact with the soil because you can see the, the lines there where the soil cracked. So the bear was stomping when he hit right here, 
and he hit it hard enough to leave an impact right here. Okay, so I just uh, followed the bear down the hill, and uh, I was way up there before when I showed you that track. Um, over here, looks like maybe a wasp nest got dug out, but I'm not over there yet. We'll, we'll get there. Um, so this stood out um, because, let me step back and show you why. See, from back here, you can see that it's knocked over. Obviously, it's a tree. It should be growing or, um, upright. That's a manzanita tree. And also, this tree right here stands out because something's missing at the top. So, obviously, um, if it's visually something that a human would see, it's also visually something another bear would see. So you can see why this sort of marking is effective because it's a visual attractant to other bears. So what happened here? So the top of this tree is dead and it's also broken off. This is taller than me. Here we go. So see right here, it got broken off. There are scratch marks on it. Some of the bark is missing on this branch here um, because the bear hit it with a paw and knocked the top straight off this tree. So scratch marks on the branch here there are scratch marks down here. Let's see if I can show you. So there's a split right here. And this is hard to hold the camera and hold the tree at the same time. But uh, the bear hit it with enough force that it split. Um, there is some older marking because look right here. This has healed up and got this brown patina on it because that is year old sign. This is the fresh new stuff. Um, so apparently the bear did some marking on this tree last year as well. Here's some indication here. That looks old because you can't see the fresh bark under it. This one down here looks newer. But this tree was decapitated, which is another thing that bears do. They can bite them. They can pull the top over with their paw until the top breaks off. Um, but anyway, this tree was decapitated. So now on to this manzanita here. Look at the bark right here if the camera can focus on it. And notice the smudge marks there of dirt. So this is smudge marks left by the bear. Look at the size of it. And the bear hit it and stepped on it and knocked it over. See how it's right down here? Watch what happens when I push down on it. So it's already moving there. It's loose in the soil because the bear has been stepping on this and knocking it over. So this right here, this is just dirt. I can wipe that off with my hand. But this is where he stepped. So up here, you've got broken off branches here. That's a fresh break. And uh, so this was damaged by the black bear. All of this is part of his scent marking ritual. Um, so, in, be, in the background there, this one is a Douglas fir seedling, and this one is a manzanita. So, as far as species, it seems like this, this bear, if it's the same bear, prefers the Douglas fir, um, as you'll see in one of my previous videos. Um, Douglas fir, and in this case, a manzanita. Um, I don't see them marking on the redwoods as much, but they do use the redwoods for their scratching trees, so they rub their back on them. Let's go see that. Okay, this is not a very fresh sign. It looks like it was done a while ago and then uh, rained on. Um, and I don't think this was the black bear because the size of these marks, or the, uh, the digging action, is pretty narrow. So that's not much more wider than my hand. There's also this, which is a scat made out of grass. Now that's something that's typical of gray foxes around here. They eat grass and it comes out in their scats. They also tend to deposit their scats on objects that will attract attention. So if you're walking along out here and you're another fox and you just see grass, 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 and you look here and you go, oh, here's a point of interest. So a gray fox will key on on that and come over there and uh, check it out. So this scat would be noticed. And there's also a little flattened area there. I can't tell what that is. 
maybe the fox sat there, but I can't say that for sure. <clears throat> so, over here, there's more indications of the bears in here. Here's some more bear trail heading that way, around in here. Um, and it looks like there's also one going this way. So, let's see where this goes. You can see the knocked over grasses heading in this direction under this tree here. And then, through here, the camera's going to have trouble here with the, the change in light. But it looks like there is a trail going down there. And that looks really steep. But bears can make it no problem because they're on four feet. They have four, four foot drive. And I don't. I have two foot drive. Bear trail heading down the mountain. So I wanted to show you these two trees from the downhill perspective looking uphill at them. And uh, I'll give you a wide view so you can see that it's on the edge of a field and that if you're an animal that's just walking by here, and this is the most well-used trail through here, if you're an animal just walking by, it's very noticeable that that tree has fallen over and it's something that would visually attract your attention. So that's how other bears see these as well. Um, they also use scent, of course. I mean, a bear can follow the footprints of that other bear and sniff every one and find everywhere that that bear stepped. So you know you're tracking a very large animal with um, soft paws if you see marks that big. But uh, the other way that animals communicate is by visually attractive um, or visually noticeable signs like this. So not only is this scent marking, it's also a visual attractant that will say to another bear, hey, go check out that tree. You might want to sniff around there and uh, you can see another bear has been here. That's how animals communicate in the woods. Here's another black bear track. You can see the outline here of the metacarpal pad. Right there. The toes would be up here. Carpal pad would be back here. This is a right front foot. Cool, huh?